Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this is episode two of my Keto Beginners series. In this video, we're going to take a look at products, packaging, labeling, nutrition information, and ingredients. The things that we need to navigate when we go to the store and we're picking up that package and wondering, does this fit into my keto lifestyle or not? I'm going to cover my strategy as well as some of the pitfalls that I still kind of, I don't know if, do you fall for a pitfall? Maybe. Whatever. They strike me. I fall for them. Whatever. I think whether you're a beginner or not, this is a valuable lesson. There are some things in here that are really helpful to remember. Over the course of this video, I will be sharing a number of different pictures of nutritional information, you know, the little FDA panel, as well as ingredients. And some of you may be tempted to be the ingredient police when you see some of these ingredients. I would ask that you refrain from that. At least wait until the end of the video when I discuss ingredients more thoroughly. Another thing I'm going to touch on just briefly as a point of reference, because I'm going to talk about it over the course of this video, are total carbs versus net carbs. This gets to be kind of a tricky thing when you're looking at packaging. So total carbs is pretty obvious. You, just, you look at the back of the package and you look at the serving size and you see what the total carbs are. That's total carbs. If you're counting total carbs, I think keto gets a little bit easier. At least you don't have to do as much math, though it may limit some of the products that you might be able to eat that are labeled keto friendly, if in fact they are. So the calculation for net carbs is total carbs minus dietary fiber minus sugar alcohols and or allulose. As we get further into this video, I'm going to discuss how manufacturers can kind of manipulate that whole net carbs thing and why that's potentially dangerous when you're buying prepackaged foods. Now, I personally don't do total carbs or net carbs. I know that sounds horrible, but I've been doing keto for four years. I've got a pretty good feel for what I can eat and stay in ketosis. I would compare it to like the first time you go out on a road trip or a few times you've gone out on a road trip, you need that GPS. You need Google Maps or Siri or whatever to, to tell you where to go. But once you've made that trip a handful of times, you can kind of just do it by memory. And that's sort of where I'm at with keto right now. Still, I do look at the product labels and there are certain red flags to me that say, put that back on the shelf. One final little editorial comment that I need to make before we start diving into my process and looking at some labels is my opinion on the FDA labeling. I think it is shameful. Even though they made some improvements to it for the first time in 20 years, they made these improvements last year, it's still not very good. I think it's easy to manipulate. I think it doesn't allow for easy comparison. For example, I've seen a number of products from Europe where the nutritional label shows per 100 grams. So you've got serving size, and then you've got per 100 grams. And that allows you to very easily compare two products side by side. Another thing I take issue with in terms of the FDA labels is the rounding. If a product has less than five calories per serving, it can be listed as zero calories. For example, I have a bottle of zero sugar tonic water, and it's three servings per container, zero calories per serving, but if you drink the whole bottle, it's 15 calories. Now, for those of us on keto, calories maybe aren't as big of a deal as the carbohydrates, and therein lies the other problem, which is rounding down carbs. If a product has less than half a gram of carbs, they can round it down to zero. I'm assuming this is the case, too, on any half gram. So if something has 1.4 grams, you can round it down to one gram. For the label. The final thing is it seems like the FDA allows a fair bit of latitude for what a company can call fiber. So if you're calculating net carbs, fiber is important. But if you've watched any of my product testing videos, especially like the bread videos and tortilla videos, you'll see that lots of times those fibers aren't just passing through your system harmlessly. They are spiking your blood glucose. They may not knock you out of ketosis, but Keeping stable blood glucose is important because that helps us regulate our insulin, which helps us regulate our weight. If you want to find out more about this, read the book The Obesity Code by Dr. Jason Fung. So with that out of the way, let's talk about my methodology. The very first thing that I look at on the back of a package is total carbs. If that number 
typically is in the mid single digits, I generally have a pretty good feeling about that. I feel like they're being honest with me. Well, I mean, they're also being honest with me if it's a really big number. If I grab a package and it's 37 grams of total carbs per serving, well, that's a problem. I'm putting it back on the shelf. Essentially, if something gets more than probably 20 grams of total carbs in a serving, that's that's an immediate end game for me. It just it goes back on the shelf. Now, if on the flip side, the total carbs is really, really low, like one gram or zero grams, then I start to get a little suspicious. And we move on to step number two, which is looking at the serving size. And is that serving size realistic? So I got my laptop here. I'm going to pull up an example. Recaito. I love this stuff. I used to make a shredded chicken or shredded pork in a slow cooker with this stuff. It's so incredibly easy. And I thought, wow, this because this is so easy, I should totally make this a recipe, a recipe video on Serious Keto. Well, let's take a look at the nutritional information. Five calories, uh, zero grams total carbs. Ooh, wait, I said that's a red flag. That makes me suspicious. I look at the serving size and it's one teaspoon. I think realistically, it's probably a couple of tablespoons, at least the way I'm making my tacos with this, with shredded chicken or shredded pork, I'm probably getting about two tablespoons of this sauce per serving as it's coating all the fibers of the meat. And I'm probably going to have two tacos. So that takes me up to a quarter cup of this sauce, which would be 12 servings. And if we assume that they're just rounding down the total carbs, that it's actually probably half a total carb per serving, well, now I'm at six grams of total carbs. Maybe not a big deal. Maybe it is. Now, there's some other issues with this particular sauce as well as you start looking down at the ingredients, but I'm not going to go there quite yet. The next thing I will do is I will check the net carb calculation. Now, the FDA hasn't entirely caught up with the whole net carb thing yet, so they do not subtract allulose along with the alcohol sugars, but manufacturers typically will, and they will put it right on their package. They will have total carbs minus fiber, dietary fiber, minus you know or the erythritol or allulose or whatever sweetener they're using. If the fiber is naturally occurring in the product, to say it's a vegetable or maybe it's blackberries or something like that, then I trust the net carb calculation. But anytime it's an added ingredient, some type of soluble fiber, whether it's tapioca fiber or corn fiber, vegetable fiber, um, what is it, uh, fructooligosaccharides, these are all things that can be classified as fiber, yet have the potential to spike your blood glucose. Additionally, even though you can subtract alcohol sugars, there are some alcohol sugars that do have a fairly high glycemic index. Maltitol is one of them. So here's an example of net carbs. We've got this new trail, low carb keto granola, and it says right on the front of the package, three grams net carbs. So let's take a look at the nutritional information, starting with my step one, which is looking at total carbs. 11 grams, borderline high. Not horrible, but borderline high. We'll see. It's not a put it back on the shelf right at this moment sort of decision, but it's a proceed with caution decision. Serving size, one third of a cup. For granola, that might be realistic. The net carb calculation, we've got 11 grams of total carbs, minus four grams of dietary fiber, minus four grams of sugar alcohol is a net three. Now I go down to ingredients. For me, that is step number four. I want to take a look at the ingredients and see if there's any red flags there. And by that, I really mean personally for me. Are there ingredients that I know affect me that either are going to spike my blood glucose or cause me inflammation? Those are the things I look for. And it's important to know what affects you personally, not just listening to somebody on the internet like me saying soybean oil is bad. It's bad for me. I kind of think it's bad for everybody, but I'm not going to police what you eat. Let me take a look at this then. We got sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, coconut chips, almonds, pecans, erythritol, monk fruit extract, butter, blueberries, cinnamon, salt. That's pretty clean. For me, this product, I would say, all right, put it in the cart. Now, like I said, for me, the big flags tend to be xylitol as a sweetener. That causes me a lot of gastric distress. 
some of the oils that cause me issues, especially with inflammation, I feel pain in my knuckles, knees, sometimes in my back, are soybean oil, cottonseed oil, canola oil. Those are the ones that seem to get me. Soybean oil is the worst. Now for you, there may be other ingredients. There may be allergens that you need to look out for. You may have a sensitivity to MSG. You may find that carrageenan causes you inflammation. So it's important to know what affects you. So I think this dovetails nicely into step number five, which for me is recognizing that the dose makes the poison. So there may be ingredients that are problematic, but they're in such small quantities that it just doesn't really matter. For example, commercial baking powder contains cornstarch. It does that so that it's easier to measure. Is it going to be a problem in terms of your glucose or knocking out a keto? Probably not. Oftentimes, small amounts of sugar are added to a product, and that sugar is consumed in the creation of that product. For example, it could be to feed the yeast in bread, or it could be to feed the bacteria in a curing process. So, if you see sugar as an ingredient in pepperoni or bacon, for example, understand that that was part of the curing process and there may be virtually no residual sugar left over. Nothing that's going to affect your carb count or your ketosis. So how do I decide if it's too much, if it, it falls into that poison category? Well, I see where it is on the ingredients list. If it's way down at the bottom, if it's in that section that says contains less than 2% of, I don't get especially worked up about it. If I see that the serving size is fairly decent, I don't get too worked up about it. But here's an example where the serving size and the ingredients, well, it went back on the shelf. It's this barbecue rub. Sizzlin' Sweet Spicy Soy. Spicy and savory. Let's take a look at what we got here. Zero carbohydrates. Serving size, one quarter of a teaspoon. I suspect I would probably, if I'm having a, a rack of ribs or something like that, I'm using more than a quarter of a teaspoon. Looking at the ingredients, maltodextrose, number one, salt, sugar, soy sauce powder, which contains soy, wheat, and maltodextrin, hydrolyzed corn protein. I think I've read enough. I, at that point, boom, back on the shelf. Now I'm going to go through a bunch of different foods, packages, labels, etc. in a moment, but... One thing I want to address, and this is something that I see in terms of comments an awful lot, is people say, anytime I see a product that's labeled keto or keto-friendly, I immediately know it isn't. I think that may be too extreme of a response. There are some good keto products out there that are labeled keto or labeled keto-friendly. To me, seeing keto on a package is just like saying, hey, look at me, investigate, but I have no faith at all in the keto label on a product. It's just, it's, it's something that catches my eye and then I still go through the same steps that I go through and I'm about to go through right now, starting with some keto crackers. These are from Inno Foods and you can see uh, total carbs, seven grams, not bad. It's in that sort of mid range. Serving size, five crackers. That strikes me as a little bit small. I think I'm probably going to wind up eating more than five crackers. I subtract out dietary fiber and sugar alcohol. That takes me down to four net grams. But uh, yeah, I could see this as a snack item being something that I overconsume. Just me personally. Next, this is the Perfect Keto MCT oil. So you would think MCT oil should just be fat, right? Nope. Four grams total carbohydrates. Interestingly, their collagen product, which I love, has only two grams of total carbohydrates, and it also has five grams of MCT oil in it. Next, this is a bag of frozen broccoli with cheese sauce or cheese powder or something on it. 15 grams of total carbohydrates, two grams of dietary fiber. Let's take a look at the ingredients. Broccoli, so far, so good. Soybean oil, enriched flour, and then I'm done. I've gotten three ingredients into it and hit two red flags already. Back in the freezer it goes. Here is the Frontera enchilada sauce. 
four grams of total carbohydrates, not bad. There is two grams of sugar, I'll come back to that in a second. Serving size, quarter of a cup, that feels pretty realistic. Net carbs is four grams total, minus one gram dietary fiber. I'm going to get down into the ingredients and see if that dietary fiber comes from any sort of a add-in type of ingredient. We've got filtered water, diced tomato, pre-roasted or fire-roasted tomatoes, uh, New Mexican chili, roasted onions, organic apple cider vinegar, looking pretty good. Bell peppers contains less than 2% of salt, garlic, king sugar. I can't see what type of gum that is. Cayenne pepper and oregano. So the sugar is down in that less than 2% range. The net carbs are three, the total carbs are four, the serving size is right. To me, that sugar isn't a deal breaker. Next, we have some keto trail mix. Coconut and dark chocolate. This looks delicious. Nine grams total carbs. Serving size, quarter cup. Boy, that's like maybe two handfuls. I could see myself, especially on something like this, this sort of feels like a trigger food to me that I would eat more than one serving of. So we come back and we count net carbs. We got nine total minus three grams of fiber. That leaves us with six grams, right? Looking at the ingredients, almonds, and then we see canola and or peanut and or cottonseed oil. Kind of an issue for me. We've got our coconut, our macadamia nuts, almonds with it contains some sugar, corn syrup, brown sugar. Yeah, I think I've seen enough on this to say probably dangerous going back on the shelf. Catalina Crunch cereal, 14 grams total carbohydrates, getting borderline high there in my opinion. Serving size, one half cup. I think that's pretty realistic for cereal. Nine grams of dietary fiber. So we've got a net five grams of carbs. Time to move on to the ingredients and see where that fiber is coming from. The ingredients are Catalina flour, which is pea protein, potato fiber, non-GMO corn fiber, chicory root fiber, guar gum, tapioca flour. Boy, yeah, I don't get very far into this, and I get a little bit concerned about the potato fiber and the corn fiber and the tapioca flour. If I tried this, I would definitely make sure that I'm doing a glucose test to see that it doesn't spike me. Now, probably more dangerous than the products that are labeled keto or keto-friendly are the ones that appear to be safe and benign and good for keto, like olive oil mayonnaise. Hey, that's awesome. It's made with olive oil, not with those inflammatory oils. Or is it? Ingredients, water, olive oil, canola oil, soybean oil. Now, I talked about the added sugar sometimes in certain products where it's safe, in my opinion. This is an example right here. This is deli sliced chicken breast, and there's a small amount of sugar added, one gram per serving, and my guess is that that was probably part of a brining process so that it keeps the meat tender and juicy longer. But back to some things that ought to be safe. Beef jerky. Does it get any more keto than that? I don't know. Let's take a look at the ingredients. Oh, seven grams of total carbohydrates, six grams of added sugar. This is not sugar as part of the curing process. This is sugar for the sake of flavor. So I was at Costco and I just went through all of the beef jerky and beef sticks. Here's Golden Island Korean barbecue. 10 grams total carbohydrates, 9 grams added sugar. Larissa's Kitchen, organic, grass-fed beef. Wow, this has got to be good, right? 6 grams total carbohydrate, 5 grams added sugar. Pacific Gold beef jerky. 9 grams total carbohydrates, 8 grams added sugar. Archer, grass-fed mini beef sticks, zero grams of total carbohydrates. This is the one that went in my cart. Another product that I bought, I broke my own rule. I didn't look at the labels. I thought, oh, look, these are basically like wisps. They're crackers made out of Parmesan. Perfect. Wonderful. Keto. Buy it. Got home, looked at the back of the bag. Total carbohydrates, seven grams, two grams of dietary fiber. Well, what? the heck are these made out of then? Looking at the ingredients, cheese, good. Organic brown rice, organic oat bran. Mm. Should have read the label. So that is my system for reading the back of packages. 
If you have got some other suggestions that you would add, please let me know down in the comments below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please tap that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, hit that subscribe button, then hit the bell to turn on all notifications. And if you really, really, really like this video, click that thanks button. Find me a cup of coffee or some beef jerky without a bunch of added sugar. Thanks for watching.